Welcome. Hello, everybody. Lisa, Deborah, Darlene. Awesome. I see the comments, but then I think the eyeballs have to catch up where it shows me like people are actually on. Yeah, it's weird. Um, but yay. All right. So let me know. I'm pretty sure sound is good at this point. Um, microphone is good on here. Muted on my iPad. Hey, Di. Awesome. Carol's here. Sweet. We got a couple of you rolling in. Peggy's here. Other Carol's here. Karen. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, let's just jump in because I have just a few things to say and then we're going to get to working with these, um, the stippled rows and all the way in. Awesome. Yeah. Thumbs up, shares, hearts, likes, all those things. Always good. Um, so reminder, last chance sale. Oh, Hey Marlene. I guess I should have waited for like more views. So, um, yeah, Sue's usually here. We're going with it, right? Um, last chance sale is still going on. Things are, I'm noticing more stamp sets are running out. So if there's stuff, you know, I know I'm having my sale in a couple weeks. Um, but if there's something that you, you know, can't stand that you have to have it, um, I would say get it. Mm, I don't know. Um, I'm surprised. So the reinkers for all the in colors are out. And I believe some of the cardstock is starting to run out too. Hey, Rose. So Rose, I thought Marilyn was going on vacation unless you were going with her. I was curious because I'm ready to send your package out. And um, I was holding off on Marilyn's because she said she was going to not be home. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Cynthia. So yeah, if you're still there in uh, up there with Marilyn, that's cool. Oh, she is on Saturday. Okay, so she's leaving on Saturday. Well, I'm definitely going to hold off on hers and put yours in the mail tomorrow. Um, so yeah, last chance sale. Things are, are getting gone. My retirement sale, um, I was going to create the event last night, and then I realized I had the wrong date on my, you know, my picture that I created for the, for the video. So it is Sunday the 28th at 4 o'clock, and it's going to be on Facebook only. And that's where I do my, um, all my retiring stuff uh, half off, right? 50% off the catalog price. So you're going to save the shipping and the tax um, on the products. Now, getting them to you, we got to pay shipping or you got to come get it, right? And if nobody, if you don't live in Maryland, you're not going to come get it. So we'll have to figure out delivery. So, hey, Cruz is here. Awesome. Um, so that um, paper share, let me go back to this. Um, so sign up, just email me, Tony stamps at Yahoo. And I need that, like email me right now. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to start sending out invoices next week and I need everything due by the 28th. So just let me know if you want in on that. All right. Do that, that, um, paper pumpkin. So for anybody that's a paper pumpkin subscriber, I just finally paid attention to the email that we get. And, um, it's got like, uh, a, a case, a case insert. So like if you're storing your stamps, maybe in the Stampin' Up cases, the plastic cases, it comes with a printout. Like all you can do is print it and store it. I don't tend to do that, but it's there, it's available. Um, and it had something else, maybe a, a link to the video for their unboxing. Uh, but yeah, I should pay attention to this more. Usually I see them and I'm like, Oh, I already have my delete. But I did just get my paper pumpkin kit yesterday and I love it. It's like gold, butterflies, all the things. Um, so let's, yeah, let's go down here. And I want to show you a couple of things and then we're going to get to it. So, you know, my friend Jamie and I went and had a cake decorating class um, Saturday. So we came back when we, on our way home, we stopped by, there's this um, craft reuse store called Scrap Be More. It's in downtown Baltimore and it's just for like a community thing. People donate their stuff that they don't want anymore. And then people can go in and buy it dirt cheap. So I got like this cute paw print washi tape, not even open. I don't know how much this was. Um, cause like my whole bill was like $5. Then I got some Giot tags that are a nice orange color. I love them, but $1.50. That's pretty cool. And then I scored, we both scored actually a Versamark pad. Look at that. It looks brand new. Like, I think I'm going to clean up the sides here, but 
yeah, so I'm putting that in my stash. You know, I think I only have maybe one extra, but cool. So I got all that for like five dollars or something. And then as we we're walking to my car, a twenty dollar bill rolled like blew across the street right in front of us. I stepped on it and we split seed. Like it was good. It was a good day. <laughs> so yeah, today. Um, oh, and then one more thing, and then we'll start. I was going to show you the two kits. I'll do that at the end. So I was hoping Gail's on here. You know, I get this uh, post office mag magazine because I order stamps from them all the time. But look at this new postage stamp. I'm going to have to get some of these because sea turtle. And there's a couple of good things. And But look at these. It's like a whole bunch of different versions. Endangered sea turtles. So, and that is available May 11th. Pre-order May 11th. So... If Gail's not on here, I'm going to have to remind her later that she can get some of these. Like, that looks cool. Protect the sea creatures. Horses, if you're into horses, that looks pretty cool. That is available May 17th. Uh, Carnival, no wait, this is Shaker Design. These are interesting. You know, I like to match stamps to the cards if I can. So I might do this with maybe some quilting cards or something. Shaker Design, pre-order May 20th. So it seems like it's every week they release a different one. So really, I'll probably wait till the end of the month or maybe June and just get all of them at the same time. And then Carnival, different Carnivals, May 6th. So I think that's cool. That's a lot of fun. All right, anything else? Oh, yeah, New Flag ones, Betty Ford. This black and white Ansel Adams, that looks like could be... Good for maybe guy cards or anything, really. I like the scenery. And that, what does that say? April 15th. Hmm, okay. So that'll be earlier than the rest. But yeah, just those first couple were um, brand new ones. So the cover, like, took me away, though. I was like, oh, yep, Gail's got to get those. Yeah, Deborah, the horses, I think that's going to be, a lot of people are going to like those. And those are the forever ones, so... I don't even know how much they are. 68 cents now. 20 of each. Yep. I mean, not 20 of each. Panel of 20. You know what I mean. All right. So that's that. So tonight, couple. I want to make a couple cards with you using the stippled roses. This is one of the bundles that is bundle price now. It's carrying over to the new catalog, but then it will not be a bundle price. So if you're going to get them, um, I think the other ones. Oh, and shoot. I didn't bring my list. I know the other ones were like the um, balloon set, you know, the hot air balloon, the lavender, um, the submarine bundle that has a punch, and there was a different one. So all of those are, they're carrying over, but no longer at the bundle. So if you want to do the 10% off, get them now. Um, and I really, I just got these maybe a month and a half ago. Um, but anything I do tonight, any flower set you have, any like outliney, and this is stippled, so it's got like all these little dots that make the shading. Um, but all the techniques I'm going to show you will apply to any color in image that you want. Oh, Deborah, your granddaughter likes the horses. Yeah, actually, my um, friend's daughter is into horses too. Like she did the um, the riding for a bunch of years, and I think she's gonna she's wanting to buy a farm down in Texas. Uh, I hope that works out. Um, all right. So stippled roses. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, we want to pretend that I stamped this on watercolor paper. And actually, let's just go ahead and do that. You're going to need, whenever you stamp on watercolor paper, you really need to use a stamp positioner of some kind. Um, I grabbed the Misty just because it's convenient. Like it's easy. I still have my uh, stamp apparatus too. But you want to, because you need to go with this a couple times, because the watercolor paper is so, uh, like, textured. And especially with this stippled image, it takes a couple tries. So we need that, that. Oopsie, I knocked off a block. Now you need watercolor ink. And I'm going to use my Catherine Puller Midnight, uh, because this is a red rubber stamp. So I don't know if you can see, like stamping this, ink, 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 put this down, 
see how that really is a barely there image and see how the texture from the paper shows up like it's it's grainier and grainier so i really had to do this a bunch of times like maybe eight or nine times times to get a good image some watercolor paper is smoother than others so this um was the stampin up one and it's just a little rougher than some um so you have to just stamp it more all right so i'll put that away for now so hocus pocus magic magic i've got my image so yeah i really had one at this maybe 10 or 11 times like it was it's very dark but watercolor paper so we're going to look at my notes we're going to use my ink pads we're going to watercolor with ink pads and i know i've done this before but i like showing it again because it's a quick easy technique um let's look at the all the pieces though so we're going to do moody mauve five and a half by eight and a half score that at four and a quarter then I've got um, basic white for the inside. One of these seems thick. That feels thick. This is four by five and a quarter. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that in here. Realistically, I might like stamp a, a rose on the inside, one of the, the smaller ones. But for now, we're focusing on coloring this flower. All right. Then our designer paper. I couldn't decide which pack I wanted. So when I made the ad, I had this pack and the one that's like Pretty Peacock and and the um, Moody Moth. And I ended up going with this one. This is like Poetic Expressions. Um, this I cut just a very teeny border. And so this is, let me see, like five and three eighths. I just cut an eighth inch off. Yep, five and three eighths by four and an eighth. So I want to just take some scissors or you may have one of those um, rough it up tools. So I just want to scrape and rough up the edges. Most times, I and I don't care that it's going to rip. Most times I'll just use my fingernail for this because I don't want it to like cut the paper. But in this case, I want it to be more textured. So we're going to scrape these sides. Oh, a little tidbit for everyone who didn't see it on Stampin' Up! yesterday. So the color wheel that we got at convention, they are fast-tracking a product to make something available for everyone else to buy. And that should be by the end of the year. The only difference is it's not going to include the ink colors that ours has because um, then they'd have to change it all the time. But I think that's pretty cool. So it'll spin. I'm assuming it'll be like the one that we got that spins. Why wouldn't it be? All right. So we've got that. And now I also want to take it and crinkle it up, make it even more more textury. Oh, your city's lighthouse was featured in a stamp. That's cool. Yeah, I wonder, it would be cool if each state, you know how they did like the state um, quarters? Like if each state could have like a pack, that would be neat. I've seen some for Missouri and one other state, but it was like one stamp. The whole book was the same. That's boring. If we could have like a bunch of different ones. All right, so I'm liking this, and I'm going to glue it on. So see how now it looks like it's it's squinched in more, so we're going to see more of the edges, and that's good. And I don't even have to put this on straight. So what I'm going to do, put my glue right on here, and I'm going to say a little jaunty angle. And I'm just going to smash it down and hold it in place. And then I might have to tuck a little bit under some of these edges. And I'm going to fold that corner over so we get to see some of both sides. Like that's a good corner that's rolling over on itself too. 
And then down here, let's just give them all a little turn in. Actually, except for that bottom one. We don't need them all to be the same. All right, cool. So that's our base. And then I did bring in um, some ribbon that I know I've said this before, but I have this old sweet sugar plum ribbon. It goes really well with the Moody Mauve. So I only have a little bit left. Let's color our flower. So I want to use my ink pads and I'm just going to do, um, actually I'm going to do three colors. I'm going to do bubble bath, moody mauve and old olive. So we need watercolor, either a painter, like a, a paintbrush and a cup of water or these old aqua painters or the new ones they call I think water brushes. I'm not sure, um, but you're going to need a couple napkins. And then if you have a glass work surface, you can do this right on your work surface. I like to use my ink pads just because it kind of controls it a little bit more. Uh, and let's bring in a scratch piece of white to cover up this so we can actually see what we're doing on this I got this pack of scratch paper at convention with the dog, um, but it's a little bit distracting. All right, so our flower, I think it kind of goes like this. Doesn't have to be exact though. All right, so let's just grab some blocks. And these, I believe, are mostly clean. So I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna start with the flowers and I'm gonna do lightest to darkest. So I'm gonna start with some bubble bath. And this is all I do, like ink up right on the block. And you can see kind of the pink there. That's all I want. Now, <coughs> water coloring. You can do uh, wet on wet, which would mean we're going to wet this paper first and then we'll bring in our color. Or you could do wet on dry. And if you do it wet on dry, it's just a little bit darker. So I want to do... Um, I want to do wet on wet. So we're going to wet this a little bit at first and then come over here and get color and just start putting it in there. And then I'll do the same thing over here and I'm just going like random. This is really light. Now I'm going to go back and touch some of the like stipply bits with the Moody Mauve, which will be darker because that's kind of like the shading. All right. And this, I'm happy with that. So just wipe off our aqua painter. And actually, I'm going to wipe this off and put this in the Moody Mauve since that's like a lighter color and a darker color. Ooh, now that is really going to show up. Yeah, water painters. That's what the new one is. So see how light it is? You can barely see that in the camera. Um, but I can see it for sure. I'm not going to want too much of this moody mauve. But I am going to go back and I'm just going to hit some of these stipply areas. And then grab just a little bit of this and just touch it in trying to make it look a little bit, you know, 3D or just different. And then I'll do the same thing in here, go in with the stipply, get it re-wet it first. And I'm working pretty quickly, but you don't have to rush. If it gets dry by the time you get to it, you just got to put more water on it. And every time will be different. So don't worry about like, oh, the petals aren't the same. Like it's, it's really good enough. So you get some, you're seeing some difference. Hopefully you can see the darker bits, but pretty quick. All right, clean. And then this one, I'm just going to wipe off, but I'm not going to reuse it because I'm going to have to wash that. So let me make a pile there, grab a new block for my old olive. And you know, I got to look at the case. Um, it looks like there was buds there and, oh, look at this here too. 
<coughs> All right, I completely missed some flowers because really it's kind of a mess trying to see this. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll use the opposite side because I do need to color those. All right, go back. So see, it's not a big deal if you don't miss it. So I'm going to look here, here, here's a flower, and then here's like a little bud. I'm not trying to get all that green detail for the leaf, though. I'm just going to make that a little bit pink. So I'm going to get this wet. Go in with some bubble bath. Come in down here. And then just add some of that, too. And that little bit. Okay, maybe some more of this. And then we'll go back to the Moody Mauve. It's hard to see it with all those stipply. Like, that's dark. All right. Let's try this again. So, wet, wet. Add a little bit more color to the stipply. And I know I'm, like, wet and dry. I'm just trying to get it different, like some different shades. I'm cool with that. So if you don't like this technique, like if it's not controlled enough, like it's cool. You don't have to do it. You can use markers. You can use um, blends. <coughs> watercolor pencils are really good because you do get more control with the watercolor pencil. All right. This block is cleanish, and I'm just doing the one shade of green. And that's Old Olive. Old Olive is probably my favorite, like, all-purpose green. All right, let's get some of this water out of here. So it's running clear. So this time, I'm just going to go, like, all the leaves, get them wet. And that's pretty wet. And then I'll go back in and just see, like, touch it. See if it, it'll spread out some. And then I can go back if I need and add more. And if I keep going, it's going to get lighter. Like, if I don't go back and touch the, the ink. And that's good because then that gives us some shading, too. But that is... I'm pretty happy with that. See how much ink I got on this block and I don't even need it. All right. I think this is good. And while that dries for a minute, I can stamp a greeting. But these, I will have to take these blocks into the sink and um, just run them, clean them. All right. So here's our, ooh, I like that. Um, and I'm just going to pick, I have this scrap of thick. And I wanted to stamp the greeting. What was I going to use on here? Oh, best birthday wishes. So I didn't mount any of these. I thought I would show you real quick um, how I do mount these. So the bigger ones, I don't put the stickers on the back. And actually, I will go back and trim that. But the tiny ones, like this, best birthday wishes, that's too wobbly. I like to trim on both sides so I don't catch any rubber on there. Um, but I do want to put the sticker on. So what I use, I learned this from Gail. So grab a block and we put the sticker right on the block. And you want to get both pieces of this sticker, like the paper and the sticker itself. So stick this down. All right, so best birthday wishes. So I'm going to flip this over so it's going the same way. Peel this off. Now I just have to line up the edge of the sticker through the block to the edges of the stamp. And it is kind of hard with my face far away. But that, at least you can match up your shape, and that's perfect. All right, and then I go back and cut this. 
because like I said, I don't like it. Now, sometimes I'll try to cut it at an angle, like so it's going out. See how that's like a little bit angled? I'm not really good at that, but I try. All right. I just want that top of the rubber to be right up on the words so I don't get any stray ink. All right. That's good. So then when I come in to use it, when you look at it this way, top to bottom, you can kind of see, let me put this behind it. You can kind of see the edges of the foam poking out. So that means it's, um, you know, angled a little bit. And Gloria, to eliminate wobbling, put another small stamp on top of the stamping block. Oh yeah, like something over here to even out the pressure. That could work as well. And of course, I mean, the Stamparatus or the Misty should help. Um, but greetings like this, I'm like usually very quick. I just want to stamp it and be done. All right, that looks like it's straight. And actually, I'm going to hand cut this anyway. Where'd this go? So let's bring in, um, I think I want that old olive back because too much Moody Moth is not going to be good. All right, oopsie. And I'm just putting this on the scrap so I can cut it, like hand cut it. And that is giving that watercolor paper some time to dry because that really did soak up a lot of water. Clean this. I think I'm going to use this birthday one in another card. All right, so here's our card. We're going to go, this will be here. I want to put a little bit of ribbon like behind this. So, you know what? I want to do a couple of rows. This fast fuse tape is really pretty strong. So I want to go at an angle. So I'm going to start here, there, just making sure it sticks a little. And then let's do one more like up here and then it can hang off the edge. This is really like freestyle, however you want to have the ribbon. Oh yeah. I like it. And if it hangs off the edge of some, doesn't matter. Oh yeah. I like it. All right. And then we'll just hand cut this. And you know, I'm probably going to rip the edges of this. I'm getting as close as I can. If you don't like this, don't do this part. Maybe cut something out of a die like that does a little label. Ooh, yeah. I'm liking that. Okay, this one is turning out better than in my notes. I love when that happens. Okay, we need dimensionals for this. And then I think I'm just going to glue this one down flat. But let's do, uh, you know what? No dimensionals. Let's grab some foam tape. Our dollar store foam tape. Rose, that's so awesome that you're still at Maryland's. You've got to have a lot of quality time with her. That's cool. Let's put a little bit there and then maybe one little bit more there. And then we're going to add some gems when we get all this done. I've got my, these in color enamel dots, which I believe these are retiring. All right, and I do want to put a little bit of glue on this so I can move it around a little bit. So this foam tape helps keep all that ribbon in place. And, oh yeah, I like that. Okay, see, I love all the texture and the popped up business. And then we'll just glue that down and then add some some gems. All right, let me see how 
straightish, I can get that. And I'm going to go right over the corner. Hopefully that will keep it in place. Let me just press that for a minute. Missing people cartons. Who's Is Gail missing? Hi, Penny. Yeah, this is just our first card that we've got on. Um, yeah, definitely let, let me know how your visit went. All right, so we're going to put some of these dots on. And, mm, well, I'm going to do at least three, maybe more. Let's do a big one, a little one. Pearls would look good on this too. Where'd that go? Oh, stuck on my finger. I think pearls would look nice. Iridescent rhinestones. Oh yeah. All right, let's do another, just like one, two. Marilyn, she'll be evicted on the 27th. <laughs> All right, let's do that. And then one more big one, because this is kind of like over here by itself. All right. Mm, I like it. So when this dries, because it's still damp, I can still feel it. Um, when this dries, I think I might even go back and add Wink Stella to make that even sparkly, you know, like a little shimmery. But I like that background, like the roughed up. Mm. All right, so that's our first coloring, is using our ink pads and our um, ink blocks, I should say. All right, so that's number one. Let me get all these paper towels out of the way. So the next one we are going to do, uh, so no line coloring. Remember when we got this, um, our new color this year, one of the new colors is basic beige, and I said... Rose, do I have any openings at my place? <laughs> no, no room at the end. You're funny. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't be that far. But I can't take all that time off work. I just had time off. All right, so we're going to do soft sea foam. And this is seven and a half by five and a half. Still score it at four and a quarter. But that gives us this part down here that we're going to, you know, we're going to see peek through. Um, then I've got a piece, soft sea foam still, and this is three by five and a quarter. So I'm just going to glue this in. Now I'm not going to glue my white to the inside yet because I want to stamp that. But this is how it's going to go. So this will be like here. And then we'll have our greeting down here. So I don't want to mess that up just yet. Let's do the coloring part. So, Rose, you fold clothes and do dishes. You could, and you could move all my stamp room. No, I've got to do a whole organization thing. Get stuff out of there. All right, so I stamped on. For this one, we're going to do um, stamp and blends. So, and no line coloring. You can do no line coloring a bunch of different ways. I like to stamp it with a lighter color, and then you could color this with anything, really. Regular markers, um, I'm going to do blends. You could do uh, watercolor pencils um, or the crayons, watercolor crayons that we don't have anymore, but you would need a permanent ink for that. So with this, so this is water-based ink. Water-based ink, alcohol markers. It's the opposite. So if you want to do alcohol ink like stays on then you could use watercolor pencils water you know you could watercolor with these inks um, but just keep that in mind so water-based ink alcohol markers so we're doing opposites so i stamped that and die cut it already and this was just one stamp like i didn't use the stamp rats or anything i just inked it up stamped it down once so we have enough of we've got the image and we've got all our stipply bits so that's the basic gray, no, basic beige. Um, so I'm going to take, let me see, soft sea foam. I'm going to do those later. And then I'm going to do uh, fresh freesia and bubble bath. So I'm going to start with the dark 
and I'm just going to pick, I actually need to look at this stamp set so I can see like what I'm working on. So I want to do this one in purple. So let me just face it the right way. So I'm just going to go all over the stipply bits, even the lines, and I'm doing a pouncing, but I just want to cover everything they've already stamped out for us in the dark. And then I'm going to add some extras just to make sure that there's going to be some difference. So we get shadows, which I'm not real good at, um, but I can generally follow a line. And that's what they've done with us uh, with this. They give us the outline and then the shadow bits are the stipple part. And then it should come all together. All right, so I'm hitting up everything that I see has the basic beige ink. So this kind of looks a wreck, but that is covering up all that ink. Then I'll take the lighter color and you know what this, I'm gonna use the fat end. All right, so now I'm just gonna go all the way up to the edge. I might have to turn this. So if you have um, <coughs> the shimmery white paper, anything thick, this is gonna work with. Don't try this with regular basic white or basic vanilla, cause it'll bleed too much. So you want something thick. All right, and hopefully this will even out and look a little bit better. Maybe I can go and touch up some of these, this edge. Ugh. All right. Because it seems like it's running together. Hopefully that'll look somewhat better once it dries. All right, so that one, and then let's just do, let's do this one over here. So again, I'm gonna hit all of the inked up bits. And actually, let's just go ahead. I felt like my hair was in the way. And this is kind of tedious, but it's giving you the outline. So we just have to follow along Like, I think that's good enough. I don't know. It kind of doesn't even look like a flower at this point. All right, and then let's do, let's do this one too in the purple. So this is the Fresh Freesia. Let's go all the way down here this little bulb and then we'll do the um the bubble bath and then the greens all right so again we'll do dark i'm gonna do this lighter one first so do all the outline <coughs> and you could take more time with this i'm just trying to get this done quick enough all right dots 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 Cause that's the only thing I really don't like about coloring is how sometimes it's kind of tedious. <laughs> Gail's here. Were her ears burning? That reminds me. So Gail and Sue are both going to be here with me next week. We're each going to be doing like we're picking a retired stamp or bundle, like whichever one we say is our favorite or whatever we want to do something with. And so you're going to get three different, you know, everybody's going to take a turn making a card with their, their favorite retired. All right. So, um, again, I'm just following the edges with all the dark, the shading. This is a big flower. And some of the speckles. I 
feel like I got to do some around the edge. Now, if you thought this basic beige was too dark, you could always, you know, stamp it off once. But I think it's a good shade for no line coloring. That's what I thought of first when, when we saw how light it was. Otherwise, I don't know what we would stamp that would be this light. I mean, basically, it's another shade of tan, I guess. Like anything that we would want to make brown, we could just have it light brown. All right. I'm going to put some more stipple bits in here. And then, oh, you know what? I guess this thing, I don't know what that is. And then we'll go in with the light. The pink is showing the difference in the shadows better than the freesia. But hopefully that'll fix itself. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys can even tell. Hopefully you can. There's, I definitely see darker through that one. The freesia... That's maybe not a good choice. That That's just too dark. All right. And then we'll go in and do with the uh, soft sea foam. So again, dark, just highlight everything. And I'm just going to go like edges, outline, some of the stipply bits. quick. Oh, there's more stipply on this one. So yeah, when I, I didn't get this set at first because I thought I had an older set that was called Stipple Rose, not with the D. Uh, and of course couldn't find it, so I must have sold it off. But it was just a single rose about the same size. It's one thing I get, you know, kind of aggravated when we get similar images year after year. But then I notice that with all the companies, really, like, you know, like zinnias are in now, right? I've seen other companies do zinnias before it was sunflowers. Like, we've all had sunflowers. Same with this stipple rose. All right, I'm liking this. So the no line coloring is another thing we can do with it. Yeah, that fresh freesia, definitely disappointing. The bubble bath though, good. All right, so let's hit this with some Wink of Stella. And I'm just gonna put it over all my flowers, even the failed Freesia flowers. So speaking of this Wink of Stella, nobody has made mention of it, but um, so with the merge, not merger, with the closing of Close to My Heart and the uh, the makers, you know, some are going to, with Stampin' Up, some are going with Close to My Heart. I mean, not Close to My Heart, Creative Memories. Um, but for those coming to Stampin' Up, you know, there's an agreement on like certain products that they're going to start selling from Stampin' Up that they've had at, at Close to My Heart. I hope they sell their shimmer brush because I know I've showed it to you before. It's bigger and it's got just a little bit more shimmer um, and it's like a little bit cheaper. So I hope they bring that over. All right. So this is going to go here and I need my fresh Freesia ink pad. And we're going to do our greeting. So let's see. I want this to be like here. So I'm just going to hold that in place. And if I mess up, I can flip it over. Oh, yeah. That's going to work. <gasps> Straight enough. I like it. All right. So let's glue this in. I 
think I did a whole video on no line coloring that you can do different different things. So we might have to go back to the uh, the archives for that. But it's good for anything like this that has like built in shadows. All right. Ooh, I like that. Now I wanted to bring in um, some of this sheer ribbon. <coughs> mm. And I think I'm just going to do, I think I'll do something similar. Let's just add, add a little bit from behind. So this time I want it to end here, coming off this side. I just want a little bit to hang out. That'll be good. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, and then we'll pop that up too. Let's get this. And put that right over the ribbon so that kind of holds that in place. That's gonna work. And then we're gonna add some of these uh, pastel iridescent gems. Actually, let's put some glue on here. All right. Lisa, you still have the older one, the stippled rose? I really, I like that one. That would definitely work. All right. Now these blues are not going to match, but I'm thinking the golds will be just fine. And I've got one by itself that I want to use. Uh, so let's do one, two, one, two, mm, put one right there. So take this little one and then there's just really two sizes of these, big and little. So let's do the big one here. And then one more little one. Mm. Yeah, Fresh Freesia, I think, fail for this particular technique. But the bubble bath looks good. Gail, yeah, where's Penny? She was, um, she just popped on. She was visiting her brother, her brother-in-law. She said she'll come back or she'll catch the reruns. Um, so that's our second one. Now for the last one. Let me get this out of the way. So for this one, I wanted to go again, kind of um, with the water coloring, but not using the ink blot. So I'm going to bring in my sheet, my, my glass mat. So, you know, I'd like to do ink smashing. Um, they, there is ink smushing where you will take like a little piece of plastic and, you know, you get your ink on your surface and then you take your plastic and then put it right on here. But I like to just make it quicker and easier and do ink pad directly on my block. I mean, my mat. Words, Tony. Oh, my glass mat. And it's just quicker. Um, it is a little bit messy and stuff does spray. So you have to be careful. Um, but we're going to do some brighter colors. Uh, our base is thick white, five and a half by eight and a half. Hi, Peg. Awesome. Welcome back. It has been a while. Uh, so this five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. And I think it's going to act weird with the glare because of the, the block. I mean the mat. Um, four by five and a quarter. And I embossed this with the number two folder. Well, I call it the number two. Basics number two. <coughs> which are, those are still an online thing. And they are still available. Um, I'm just going to glue this on right now. Glue that flat. Okay. Now my pieces, my greenery and my roses. 
So I already went ahead and stamped them <coughs> again on thick paper. So basic white thick. If you have other, there's, um, I got some thick from Simon Says Stamp that is really nice. It's like, it might be 110, 115, something like that. It's thicker than ours, um, but I'm using the Stampin' Up here. But so thick because we're adding all this water to it, right? So you don't want to use regular. You can, it just becomes waterlogged, right? Um, so thick, you know, if you, I was going to stamp that and cut it, but I already did. So pretend that we did this together. All right, so again, we need paper towels. This time we need water in a spray bottle. I gotta make sure what's what. Oh, that is alcohol. Okay, so the pink bottle, you think I could label these. All right, so pink. So when I call it ink smashing instead of smushing, it's the same as smushing, but on a bigger scale. So I want some Lighter greens. What am I going to pick on this? I think I said old olive again and garden green. So I want like bold, bright colors. All right. So we'll do. And I got to stay in camera so I can go like here. So I'm going to do a little squish of old olive. And I'm just getting the corner on there. And then I'm going to take garden green and do it kind of like next to it so they can still mix it's not going to be a big deal all right so we want to take a i'm going to be ready with a paper towel i'm just going to spray it hold it up spray that see how it's starting to move already that's what we want because now we're just going to dip our leaves in and I'm not even worried like I'm going to get it to the edge right so let's go in both and we're just going to tap and it picks up a lot of color and then I'll put that off to the side and then I'll go back in with the same thing tap it drop it and then see how we've got two you might not be able to tell but we've got two different shades and I'm going to hit it more with the lighter now so you could even do three colors, get three different shades, but we're just tapping and picking up whatever color we get. It is a little messy, but that's all right. Quick, easy, let's scoop some of this off. Oh, good. All right, now, <coughs> I'm gonna need to go back and clean this with like an alcohol wipe. So I'm going to do my yellow like over here and then my orange and my red just so they're in different areas. But we can put those off to the side. See how they're curling up? Because even though it's thick paper, that's a lot of ink. But it's quick. It's fast. I'm not worried so much about um, having the green on here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cut those right off. I just want flowers on this one. All right, because that doesn't jive with my plan to have extra green. All right, and then the last one. Okay, so I'm going to go crushed curry. get these out of the way. So we'll do a swipe. We'll do pumpkin pie and let's go poppy parade. The poppy's kind of a orangish reddish. Ooh, that's very, a lot of ink. Very, very inky. All right. So same thing. I'm I'm actually holding the paper towel in front of me because I don't want it, even though my shirt is purple. All right, so we're gonna ink, ink, or water, water. Now, if you have like a straw, you could blow this around some, but ooh, look how all that went. That's good. So let's just drop it. Get some ink. Mm, we can mix in if we want. 
go in the orange and the red. Ooh, I like that. That's a good mix. And then let's do a uh, yellow. And then mm, let's put in some red. Ooh, I like that. And then let's get one that's mostly orange. Oh yeah, I like those. Super quick. Just a little bit messy. All right, I'm gonna wipe this. Oh, all that color. I should have had some other pieces that I could, you know, scoop it up. But all right, let's get these off here. And then I will set this somewhere so I can go wash it. All right, and again, these, we're going to want them to dry off a little bit. Uh, let's stamp our greeting in the meantime. And again, I'm going to do, um, this will be another landscape card. And where's a scrap of paper? So I want just a tiny little bit for, we're going to do garden green just because I like that. That's going to mix well. Um, let's just use this piece and I'll cut it. So best birthday wishes. Good. I like how these turned out like the different colors. Like you can get those roses that are multicolored like that. All right, just going to wash that off. All right, and cut this. So yeah, any flower set you have, you can do the same, same techniques with. And I'm going to rip just because I like it. I feel like I need to trim just a teensy bit off that bottom. So yeah, next Thursday should be very fun. We'll have the three of us together and then we'll each take a turn making something beautiful and then showing you some other things. Like my plan is that we'll each make something live and then show like one or two other cards. All right, we're going to leave this greeting for here. So I want these, I was kind of thinking like overlapping a little bit. So I'm actually going to cut this off. And these are still super soggy. I'm going to go this way. So I'm going to glue these down flat and then pop up the, the roses. I could probably hit this with my, my little dryer, my little heat tool. That's like a little mini hair dryer. But this will be fine. So I'm just going to overlap. Kind of like they're climbing. And then we'll add some dimensionals and pop these up. Funny, they ended up looking very similar. This one has a little bit more yellow. So let's do cluster. We've got to cover up that join area in the middle. And then, oh yeah, then we can like, that looks a little bit dumb, but let me get these dimensionals on. All right, so one more talk about paper share uh, that I do have a blog post about it. So anybody let me know. I'm gonna send out invoices next week. I think I have the link in my description I'm not sure all right so these I feel like maybe I want like a cluster like that and then have the greeting let's do that upside down and then have that oh I kind of like that okay and then we can do uh, pop that up with the whole strip
Yeah, that works. And let me just hold this up, make sure it's going straight-ish. Oh, yeah, I like it. All right. And then for this one, I was going to use, I have just some of these um, white and basic gray. These are called classic matte dots, and they are retiring. I like these at first, but then I decided I wasn't really a fan of how tall they are. Um, so we're just going to use them up. One, two, three, four, five. Let's start with five and see. Oh, I do like the white on white. I may add another two. Oops. My little glue dots were a little bit, or blobs were a little bit big. Hmm. I kind of like it. Okay. Yeah, I like the watercoloring, like, quick versions of it. I don't really have a whole bunch of patience, but um, I like the end results. Ooh, this is stuck. Yikes. Okay, and I like these bright colors for this. All right, so that's the, I was only going to do three cards tonight. So that's our our watercolory, our ink smashing, rather, is what I call it. I really do like those rose colors with all the the mix. So ink smashing, we've got uh, no line coloring with stamp and blends, which I really hope this picture's better, you know, when I take a picture of it. Um, and then the first one was just water coloring and I used my ink pads and the ink blocks as um, for palettes. And that, look at all that texture on there. Like all that lumped up. I love it. Love it, love it. All right. Who wants to see um i got that doggy kit so thank you guys for hanging out and watching so if anybody if you don't want to see this um kit then i will catch you next week and again we're doing um guest stamping next week i'm gonna have sue and and gail with me i appreciate you guys um so yeah this is the new so every month we get two new kits and it's called the Kits Collection. And this one is called By Your Side. And so it's got all these, uh, it's like cats and dogs. So I just wanted to pull out the, the stamps to show you and pull out all the bits and pieces just so we can see, get a better look at these images. Because these are all pre-cut images. Like the only thing we're stamping on this is the greetings. All right. And I think it's what, three, however many cards is this? Nine, eight or nine? I can't remember. So yeah, this is cute. Um, ah, and the plastic doesn't want to come off. But I like this stamp. Let's just look at that first and hold it up with the white. So I'll always be at your side or by your side. You make my heart happy. Best friends forever. I'm really surprised they didn't do forever, like with a U instead. And then here's to a true friend. So you got that, Sue? I mean, Rose. Here's to a true friend. You make my heart happy. I'll always be by your side and best friends forever. So cute enough. And I think it'll be good, especially with the paw prints. Like if you need to make cards with animal themes later. All right. So let's get rid of this plastic. Yeah. I can't believe we're winding down, getting down to the end. There's only another week and a half left. And then new catalog time. Oh, and I did order. I placed another demonstrator order so I could get the new in color um, designer paper back just to show us the patterns up close. Well, of course, it's not going to be here till tomorrow. So that's just dumb. All right. So it looks like uh, this is an all inclusive. So we got the ink spot. We got the block. Looks like these little. Ugh, this is annoying little heart stickers like little enamel gems dimensionals i love that they put those in different pieces that looks like these hearts punch out so that's a good layering piece circles and i guess they use these in 
two of the different cards. So here's the circle cut out and that one too. Or maybe that is the circle. Hmm. We'll have to figure it out. There's that. Envelopes. Looks like we've got two different prints of envelopes. A plaid and a stripe. I like those. Gail, you're going to show yours on Sunday. Which one? This one or the, um, the in color packs? And we've got our card bases. So this has like got a wash on it already. That's good some little, some tags, another watercolor wash. That's cool. Here's what I wanted to get at was a, how big are these things and B what are the, the images? So let's bring in this card front just so we see. So it looks like there's four of each card base. So let's fold this just so we can see how big. All right, put that there. This, everything's falling apart. So it looks like we've got this dog, which I don't know what kind of dog this is, but that's a pretty good size. And there's, looks like there's four of each dog. So if you want to make them, you know, if you don't want to do cats, you can do all dogs. So that's a pretty good size. Then there's this kitty with some ribbon. Again, pretty good size. I guess it's supposed to be laying on the ground playing. So like that. Mm -hmm. And then this dog, this looks like a schnauzer or something, I think. But pretty decent size. And then this cat. This reminds me of our cat now, my mom's cat, Cooper. He's gray, but he's more like all one color gray. But he is pretty chill. Oh, that's cute. So then, yeah, since there's four of each one, you have 16 animals and eight cards. So you could either use these pieces on other cards, like save them for, you know, maybe a sympathy card or something, um, or use two each. That would be cute too. But I liked it. I thought that was cute. And then I really like the stamp for, for later to keep. You make my heart happy. So that's, yeah, the cat. Oh yeah. This would be a perfect wobbler, Peggy. This one that's playing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you wish uh, Stamina would create the animal images. Yeah. What color is the spot, Rose? It is old olive. So, um, I mean, we've all, we've had old olive before. But, yeah, I think it's a cute enough kit. Eight cards, and then it looks like you'll have some leftover bits for things. Um, and the stamping, like, yeah, we're just stamping. And they stamp some random paw prints everywhere. But mostly it's just the greetings and adding that little heart gem. But, yeah, cute. So, um, thanks you guys for hanging out again. And I think, did Sue say, not Sue, did Gail say she was going to do paper pumpkin on Sunday? Cause this is a really, it's a good one with like butterflies and it matches that dye that is for good for this whole quarter. Um, so interesting. I hope, I hope she's doing that. So anyway, thanks again, you guys. Um, I will see you next Thursday. Mr. McCall, Mugu, <laughs> Rose. <laughs> All right. Good night, you guys. Bye. <laughs>